Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, songs, and Bible stories. If you are a regular, I want to welcome you back. And if this is your first time, I want to let you know that we have this program every single Sabbath. It's a new program where we have different activities and we learn about Jesus and how to connect with God in a different way. So come back, visit us, and I hope to see you again. Now, have you seen all the smoke outside? Have you smelled all the smoke? Whoa, it is crazy outside. It has been like this for several days now. California, we have so many fires in California. Forests are burning and we have the firefighters who are out there protecting and trying to put out those fires. We want to pray for the firefighters today. So remember in your prayers to pray for the firefighters for their safety. Ask mom and dad to pray for them because they are out there trying to put those fires. And the, the least we can do is to pray for them Pray that God keep them safe. And thank you all the firefighters, the first responders who are out there protecting us. Not only them, but we also want to thank all the nurses and doctors from our church and the ones who are not from our church but are out there fighting this coronavirus and helping people get well. We want to thank them as they continue to fight this disease. But all our frontliners, if your mom, dad, or if you know anybody who is fighting this disease, this disease don't forget to thank them, okay? Pray for them, thank them, and let them know that we are praying for them too. Speaking about doing something like the first responders, the firefighters, the nurses, the doctors, this week I did something that I normally don't do. As you can see, I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt. Do you guys remember this t-shirt? is when we went to give out blankets to the homeless last year. It was November of 2019. I had this t-shirt on and we were giving out blankets because it was an act of kindness. Okay, it's a t-shirt from the church. You remember this, right? Well, this week I did an act of kindness that I normally don't do. You know what I did? Along with uh, several people from the church, a couple of Kids Connection teachers as well. We came out to the church and we donated blood to the Red Cross. I think I still have, yep, I can still see it right there. I donated blood this week. And I am, and I hope that with this, the blood that I donated, is go it's going to help other people who are in need of blood out there to survive. So I want to thank all the people that came out to the church this week, including Miss Marina came out, Miss Patty came out, teacher uh, Robert came out. All of us donated blood and helped the cause with the Red Cross donating blood. So thank you everyone. And that's why I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt today because of the act of kindness that I did this week. All right. So now let's get our program started. I'm going to invite all the boys and girls to stand up, get ready where you are, and let's sing our song of the day together. And we'll see what th this has to do with our program today. Because no matter what I am facing, Jesus is with me. Let's sing our song of the day together. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Oh, oh
gives me joy in every situation Keeps my spirits high no matter what I'm facing Now I'd like to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes, so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God and because you love us. Thank you for another Kids Connection program. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name today, as we learn more about you. Be with all the firefighters that are fighting the fires out there in the mountains. Be with all the nurses and doctors who are frontliners fighting this disease. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now let me ask you something. Um, in today's missionary story, we're going to hear a story about a man. A man who loved sharing the love of Jesus and sharing Jesus to other people. And one day, he met a man on the street that shines shoes. Have you seen anybody shining shoes? No? Ask mom and dad because I'm sure that mom and dad knows what I'm talking about. There are some people that shine shoes on the streets and they make money. They charge people to shine their shoes so everyone can have a beautiful shoe that is clean and either tennis shoes or, or, or your dress up shoes. So this man was shining shoes on the street and someone shared God with him. Let's watch our missionary story and see what happened. Yulian could barely feed himself from the money he earned shining shoes. He set up every day along a busy walking street in Nicosia, Cyprus. Most of his money went to buy cigarettes and alcohol. A decade earlier, Yulian had immigrated to Cyprus from Bulgaria to look for a job. One day, Philip, a global mission pioneer also from Bulgaria, walked by and greeted Yulian, asking if he needed any help. Yulian was surprised. No one had asked him such a question in a long time. It was nice to hear someone taking an interest in him and speaking his native language. But Yulian didn't answer the question and just offered him a shoe shine. While Yulian shined his shoes, Philip told him that Jesus loves each one of us, no matter what situation we're in. The mention of Jesus grabbed Yulian's attention. The next day, Philip returned and asked again if Yulian needed any help. Yulian was surprised that the stranger had returned. This time, Philip didn't need a shoe shine, so they just talked for a while and looked through the books that he brought. This became a routine. Sometimes, Philip read the Bible to Yulian, and eventually, the shoe shiner opened up about how he'd worked in construction after arriving with his family in Cyprus. He lost his job and was kicked out of his home for drinking his family and friends had rejected him. One day, Yulian led his new friend to the abandoned building where he slept. His bed was a hard floor. The sight brought tears to Philip's eyes, and they prayed together on the street. Yulian felt valued and felt God's love through the pioneer's actions. It was at that point that he gave his life to God. Although he'd drunk and smoked heavily for 35 years, Yulian decided to give up alcohol and tobacco that day. His family welcomed him back home, and now he tells everyone who will listen about his love for God. Philip regularly leads a Bulgarian language Bible study. Over three years, eight people had been baptized through Philip's work, a significant number for a country where the Adventist church has only about 100 members in a population of more than one million. He often spends his time mingling with people, getting to know them where they are. Please pray for pioneers like Philip, who are sharing a message of hope with their communities. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. Let's continue to help the missionaries with our prayers and our offerings so they can continue to help and to share the love of Jesus with other people out there. Thank you so much for your support. Now today, I'm going to play another game with you guys. Yes, it's a game. Do you have a ball at home? Do you have a ball? Yes. Do you see what I have back here? I have my own version of basketball hoop. And this is not a basketball, but this is the ball that I had today. So it doesn't have to be a basketball. It doesn't have to be a hoop. You can have an empty trash can, make sure it's clean. 
okay? And I want you guys to play a little game. But first, let me show you what we're gonna do. I have on the table here, because so you guys can see it, but I have a trash can. It's empty. Here we go. It's empty. And I'm gonna come all the way to the trash can and take three steps back, okay? One, two, three. I am all the way out here. Now, I am going to shoot 10 times the basket. Let's see how many times I can make the ball inside of the trash can as my basketball hoop, okay? Let's see how many times I am going to hit it in and how many times I'm going to miss. And I want you guys to do the same thing at home. Find a trash can and try 10 times and see how many times you hit the basket or you score inside the, the bucket and how many times you miss, all right? So here we go, three steps back, I'm right here. Are you ready? With me, here we go. One, two, and one, in. All right, let's go for second. And this is my spot right here. Here we go. Two, in. You, how many do you think I'm gonna hit it in? How many? Everyone? I'm gonna miss one, I'm gonna miss two. Let's see. Three, in. Let's, let's continue. That's three, in. Here we go, four. Four, I almost missed this one, but it's four and I hit it in. Here we go again. Oh, five, I missed one. Let me get the ball here. Five and I missed one. Here we go again, three steps back. Six, but I missed one. Here we go, one more time. Seven and I missed one. Here we go again, almost there, three more. Oh no, I missed. Hold on, let me get the ball. Here we go again. So eight, I missed two. Ready? Again. Nine, and I missed two. One more, one more time, one more time. Here we go, last one. And I missed. Out of 10, I missed three. But I scored seven times. I made seven shots in the bucket. I wanna know and I wanna see how many can you make it? Can you make all 10? Remember, three big steps. One, two, three, and you shoot. I wanna see how many you can make it in. Send me an email, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com and let me know how many you made it in. I also wanna know if you guessed it that I was gonna miss three. So I missed three, but I made seven. Huh, I wonder why I missed three. I wonder why I only made seven in the bucket. Hmm, do you think, uh, do you think that I can make all 10? I think I can make all 10, but wait, not now. You know why? Because I haven't practiced. I haven't had enough practice to make the ball in all 10 times. This is actually the first time that I'm doing this and I'm trying from this distance here. But you know what? I am 100% sure that if I practice all week and I come back next Sabbath and I try it again, do you think I'm gonna get more shots in? I think I'm gonna get more shots in the more I practice, don't you? Why? Because when you practice, you get better at what you do, right? So if you try and you make only one or you make two or you make five or seven or six, whatever you make, if you want to get better, you have to keep practicing so you get better at what you do. I'm going to tell you a story about a man. His name is Dave Hopla. Do you know who Dave Hopla is? Ask mom and dad if they know who Dave Hopla is. Maybe someone who really likes basketball will know who Dave Hopla is. Well, let me tell you, 
Dave Hopla is a person that he is a basketball hoop coach. What do you mean by that? He's not a basketball coach to everyone in every game. He is a hoop. It means that he teaches you how to shoot and make it in and get better at what you do. One of the things that Dave Hopla said in one of the interviews is that when they ask him, how are you so good at shooting hoops? You know what he said? He said, because I practice a lot. Dave Hopla is so good at shooting hoops with a basketball that one time he made 1,234 hoops without missing a single one. Whoa, that's a lot of hoops. Imagine over a thousand hoops. One, two, I did 10 and I almost got tired and I missed three. He took 1,234 and he didn't miss a single one. And then he missed the 1,300, 235. That's when he missed. But imagine a person that shoots that many hoops without missing. And Dave Hopla is the guy that tells us that he practice every day to shoot hoops. And he teaches people how to shoot hoops and how to get better. Professional players, he teaches them how to shoot hoop and shoot right, how to get it right. Dave Hopla makes 98% of his shots. That means that every 100 shots, he makes 98 shots in and he misses two. That's a huge percentage. I wouldn't do that. I, I, I miss 30% of my shots when I was doing this right now. That's because I missed three out of 10. But practice, practice, practice. Be persistent. If you don't get it right the first time, you try it again and you keep practicing until you get better. When mom and dad ask you to do something at home, do you get upset? Are you complaining because you don't want to do it? Do you think that makes mom and dad feel happy? What do you think? And do you think that if you practice more, would you be better at what you do at home? Today's story in our lesson with our teacher we are gonna hear about we're gonna hear a, a story about how she was rewarded by working hard when you work hard getting the baskets your reward is that you're gonna get better and you're gonna make all 10 baskets in at one point let's see what happened and how she was rewarded as she was persistent in doing what she was doing and no matter what she was facing, she was persistent. No matter what you're facing, remember to always ask Jesus to help you get better in what, at what you're doing. Be persistent. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. And no matter what I'm facing. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Oh, oh
Thank you for singing with us. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this program. Thank you because you are with us. And thank you because you help us to get better at what we do. Help us to be persistent and help us to get better at what we do and never give up. We know that you are with us. We know that you will, you will protect us. Be with all the boys and girls. Protect them at home from this virus, as well as all the firefighters and all the nurses and all the doctors that are responding to this emergency out there. Be with them. Keep them safe. Protect them. And Jesus, come back soon so we can go to heaven and live with you without problems where we won't have fires and, and viruses and, and problems anymore. Thank you for answering our prayer and for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. Don't forget that this afternoon is the second Sabbath of the month. So we have our Parents Connection. Tell mom and dad, mom and dad, go meet other parents on our Parents Connection Zoom this afternoon. It happens this afternoon. So don't forget that tomorrow we have our kid to kid zoom games again we come back remember last week we took a we took a break because it was a vacation or it was a, a three days uh, weekend so some kids were uh, weren't home or were out of town including myself I went to the beach last week it was nice and cool so and it was also clear because of the um, all the fires and everything it was a clear uh, weather and clear air I, I want you guys to remember when you are outside make sure that your face is covered for two reasons now one for the virus protect yourself and two because the air quality out there look outside you smell all the smoke right okay so protect yourself make sure that you're not gonna inhale you're not gonna breathe in all that those all that that ash that is flying in the air so make sure that you stay inside and and uh, whenever you go outside ask mom and dad or wear a mask all the time i love you guys i miss you so much Thank you for being a part of another program. I hope that God blesses you and protects you every day until we meet again. I'll see you next week on another Kids Connection program. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Sabbath School for September 12th. I got here Carlina and Sammy. And as always, they're going to be helping, helping me with the lesson. Have a seat, girls. So... The title of the lesson for this week is Faithfulness Rewarded, and is the story of Ruth. So let's start with the memory text. It's from Hebrews 11.6, and I'm going to read it. And it says, And without faith living within us, it will be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that He is real, and that He rewards the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking Him. So, uh, first of all, what is what is faith? Carlina, Sam, yes, help me. Can you help me? Uh, Go ahead, Carlina. Faith, faith 
Faith is believing in what you cannot see. Oh, great definition. Faith is something that you can like believe in God. Yes, like believing in God. Yes, exactly. So believe in something, yeah, that you cannot see or that you, you don't know for sure 100% that is true. Um, so you believe in that and you have faith. So this, this week, we're going to continue with the, the story of Ruth. And this time, Ruth is back in Israel with Naomi, her mother-in-law. Ruth was faithful to stay with Naomi and don't desert her and say, you go back to Israel, I'm good here. She decided, ah, uh, and said, your God will be my God and your people will be my people. And she decided to follow Naomi. And at the same time, she probably knew that it wasn't going to be an easy thing to do. But she had faith, and she had faith in her God, or in, or in the real God, because she saw Naomi's faith, meaning that Naomi believed in God so much that she learned it. And she learned, yeah, I should trust too. And so when they moved back to Israel, you know, they, they were poor, and they didn't have much to eat. And they just went back to their house that had been, you know, left and abandoned. And so the way they, they found food is they would go to fields. So they imagine there's like um, crops and fields there. And they would go and gather food that was left over. So for, you know, from the people that would harvest. And they, there would be some left over there. Uh, in Israel, they was accustomed to leave some, left, leave some of that for the poor. And so that was Naomi and Ruth's job to go gather that food, or that the grain, and make it into food. And so the blessing, though, was that one day, or like a big blessing, was that one day they were at the field of one of Naomi's relatives named Boaz and he was very rich and powerful and he had a lot of money and he noticed them there and he was very kind and said to his workers let her pick anything that she wants in fact leave extra for her so there is part of how Ruth's faith, faith was rewarded. Uh, her faith in staying with her mother-in-law, Naomi. She, God took care of them. God provided. Because there was, she, they, they came across this um, very nice and gentle man named Boaz. And as you will know, as we continue the, the story, that's going to go in the following weeks, you'll see that Ruth eventually ends up marrying Boaz. And then, long after, um, Ruth is actually one of the descendants or, or, or the family line of Jesus. And so, this is, that's like a huge blessing. Imagine it was this, this woman from another country that came to Israel and became part of the descendants of Jesus. And also she, she was able to find this very wealthy um, husband that would take care of her just because she trusted. So at times we're also faced with many circumstances where we need to have faith. And a lot of times you know, even as grown-ups, we say, oh, you need to have faith. Or they tell me, Robert, you need to have faith. And sometimes that's very easy to say, but how do we really have faith? So in, in reading this book, I was, uh, you know, on a different subject. 
you know, there's there's four steps on, on, on acquiring or learning something. So one of the things is the first step is to to obtain knowledge. So what is what is faith? The first thing is knowledge. So we already know we talked about it a little bit. Faith is believing in what you don't see, believing in things that uh, may not be uh, easily understood. For example, the the verse said. You need to have faith in God. You need to have passion for God. You need to seek Him with strength. So th those are the things that we can have faith in. So then, so so this is the, this is the knowledge of faith. The step number two is listening. So listening is kind of like also observing or uh, paying attention. So today we we talked about the story of Ruth, right? And she shows faith. And there's other, you know, other characters in the Bible who shows faith. Which other characters were faithful? Carlina or Sammy? Um, the main one is Abraham. Who else? Joseph. Joseph, yeah, he was very faithful. Because he ended up in really bad circumstances and he had to trust God. Sammy, who, who, was, who was faithful? In the Bible. Uh, got, um, Noah? Noah? Yeah, that's exactly it. Esther? We, uh, let me talk about Noah. Yeah, Noah, because they were making fun of him. They were saying, it's not going to rain. And they were going, ha, 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 you know. And he had to say, I believe in God. And God said, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Esther did have faith. Yeah, and Esther, can you tell me why? <laughs> or, or how? Sorry. She... She uh, was brave, and she had faith that she was gonna make it when she went to uh, to see uh, her husband the king. Yes, that's great. She she went in to see the king without being called for it, and she had faith that God was gonna protect her because they wouldn't do that at those times. That was like a big big uh, thing, wrong thing to do. But she did it. Which and I she had faith. Foolish, a little. No, that's foolish to normally, yeah, but if you have faith, it's not foolish, it's, it's your belief, you have faith that that's going to happen. So, okay, so now, we, so, so now we have knowledge and we listen, so now we practice, and sometimes, you know, also, the, so like the listening is the things that happen to you, if, if something good happens to you, you have to have you have to have faith that that came from God. Um, if you were feeling, they say sick, and then now you're feeling better, you have to have faith that that, that healing came from God, um, or that something was going to have bad and happen, and that that and then didn't happen to you. So you you should have faith that 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 came from God. So now you can also have faith that you're not going to get the coronavirus. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great faith thing to have. And so, with that, you have to practice. You know, we, we, with this, now we know what it is and we listen, so now we have to practice. So now, now, Carlina brought up the, the great, great point, actually. I wasn't even really thinking about it, but that's, that's one of those things. We are faced here with the circumstance, and now... We have to practice our faith and our belief in, in God. And here is here here it is. And it's not it's not really easy sometimes, but that's not the point. The more we do it, the more the more easier it is. The more we trust God, the most the more we have um, this passion that the, the the verse said, the easier it is to actually do it. And then we have to repeat this over and over because you, if you do this once, you have faith once, um, it's not really going to change you. you. But if you keep doing over, you have faith this one time and as you get older, you keep having faith and as you get older, you keep having faith and going back to faith, you're going to live by faith. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to live by faith. So the craft for today, you go to YouTube and type Faith Craft and it's under L-S-A Kids.
And for that, you will need some drawing paper, some colors or markers, and glitter or glitter glue if you have it. And we're going to create a drawing similar to what's shown in the screen. And it says, for we live by faith, not by sight. And that's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So we'll come back and show you how our crafts look. Hi, this is how our crafts came out. That's Carolina. What does it say? God will never leave you. <laughs> and this is Sammy's. And so remember, for we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So, for today's activities, uh, I invite you to go to YouTube or anywhere that you can view a Superbook. We have a Superbook subscription. And search for the Superbook Ruth. The complete story, unfortunately, is not in YouTube, but uh, it's on, on Amazon Prime and also in the Superbook su subscription. But there's some clips there you can watch, and also there's the old story, uh, or the old super book, the story of Ruth. All right, thank you for joining us. So let's pray. Dear God, help us to live by faith. Help us to know what it is, and practice it every day, and repeat it and repeat it until we know that you are there with us. In ages we pray. Amen. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us.